Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club and today we're going to be doing a review on this inverter. The inverter's name is a reliable 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. It's manufactured by WZRELB Manufacturing. The price is great on this unit, so I really wanted to put it through the tests and its paces to make sure that it holds up to everything that it claims. So first I'm going to go through some of the specs and then we'll jump right into testing. This is a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter, which is great. It means it's safe for all kinds of sensitive electronics like TVs and computers and laptops, stuff like that, um, because it's got the same curvature of energy that your house does. It's not a modified sine wave, it's a pure sine wave, which is great. You can use these for all kinds of applications. Uh, RV, obviously, you can use it as an inverter in there to change your DC battery power into AC power for appliances like blow dryers and microwaves and stuff like that uh, from your battery power. Um, yes, so this can be used in boats and RVs or in house solar applications, all that good stuff. Um, it does have a lot of different protections inside of it as far as, let's see, what are the protections? High voltage input, cutoff protection, low voltage alarm protection, overload protection, overcurrent protection, surge power protection, reverse connection protection, and short circuit protection by fuse. So it does have a lot of safeguards in there to make sure that it's going to protect itself in case you mess something up or you go overload or the battery level's too low. It does have an alarm to shut off power when the voltage gets too low or if it's too high. And so it does have all those protections in place, which is great. Um, as far as what comes in the package and its dimensions, the dimensions on this guy are 17.7 inches in length and it's also 9.4 inches across and 3.5 inches thick. And so it's a pretty hardy unit. It weighs about 16.2 pounds, exactly 16.2 uh, 16 pounds. It feels really good, sturdy, handy. Um, it's not crazy, but it does have some weight to it, which I like with my electronics. Usually the heavier they are, the, the better they're built, in my opinion, at least that's how it was back in the day. But um, as far as the, the front of the case and how it looks right here, I'll go over some of the features that are on the front. And uh, on the front, we do have our terminal block, which is what you're going to connect to in permanent installations. This is if you're going to connect Romex like you have in your house. So you're running that through your solar setup or whatever. It does have those connections right there uh, with the terminal block. It has an a two AC sockets, so you can just plug two things directly into it, which is great. That's always handy. I like when they include that. Um, so you can just plug st stuff straight into it with those two AC outlets. Has an on-off switch. Also has uh, two different displays. And the top display is going to be your input DC voltage. So that's how much voltage is coming from your batteries, where it's 12.6 volts or whatever that is. That's going to be displayed, which is very handy. And then below that is going to be the output AC voltage. So it's not going to fluctuate with the more things you have put in. It's not a wattage counter. It actually just tells you that you are getting 120 volts out uh, to whatever appliances you have hooked up to it. So that just kind of gives you a readout there. So that's handy as well. On the back of the unit, you're going to have your two lugs. You have your positive and negative lugs, so you can connect your uh, battery wiring. They do supply two wires. They have uh, two uh, positive wires and two negative black wires. Um, I'm not exactly sure what gauge they use, but you can use both of them together, and it's what they provide to get up to 3,000 watts. And I, I push it here in just a little bit to 3,000 watts, and they did warm up a little bit, but they did just fine. I would recommend going with a two-gauge wire or thicker if you're going to be pulling 3000 watts continuously uh, for any kind of big appliances like using the microwave for a long amount of time or a big AC. I would go bigger than that, but they do provide those two wires for you. Um, what else? What's in the box? Instead of, uh, oh wait, let's cover what's in the back as well. You, you have your two lugs. We talked about that. Those seem sturdy enough. Then you also have two cooling fans on either side and uh, they seem to work really well during the test and we'll get to that when we get there. Um, but I think that pretty much covers it for a lot of the specs and the way it looks and the dimensions and all that good stuff. So why don't we just jump real quick to the unboxing and I'll show you exactly what's in the box. So as we open the box, it has those nice big styrofoam inserts to keep it nice and protected during shipping. Comes with four wires, two positive, two negative there. Then you have uh, some replacement fuses, 40 amp, your instruction booklet, warranty card, all that good stuff. And the inverter itself is wrapped in plastic. It feels nice and sturdy in the hands and it seems like it's pretty well built. I didn't any, see anything that really looked off at all. Um, but overall it looks like it's a pretty good build quality and it feels really sturdy in the hand. Okay, so now that we've seen what's inside the box, let's go ahead and put this guy to, uh, to a big test. Now in order to do this, 
Um, luckily, I have two lithium ion 12 volt batteries that are really good at handling huge discharge loads, which, which 3000 watts is certainly that. Um, that will damage some smaller lead acid batteries if they're not, if you don't have a few of them set up correctly in parallel or six volt batteries in series par parallel. Um, because if you just use like one car battery on this, it's going to kill it in about three minutes and do some damage. They don't like to be have all that power sucked out of them all at once. And um, so I'm gonna be doing this test with uh, two lithium ion batteries, which can definitely handle that kind of heavy draw. And I'm gonna try to put it through a full 3000 watts of testing, uh, which is not all that easy to do. Um, I especially can't monitor it with anything. It would fry my uh, wattage meter if I tried to show you, but I figured out a really good way to know exactly how much wattage we're putting through this guy. And that's by taking a wet dry vac which is, um, it's 12 amps at 120 volts. And so when you do the math on that, and I forgot what it, I think it's 1440. Let me double check that. Um, 20 times 12 amps. Yeah, 1440 watts. So that's right about 1500 watts right there. So that's a good power draw all on its own. But then I'm also gonna be using a space heater which says right on it that on high, it's gonna be drawn 1500 watts. And I'll show you that label. Um, but those two things combined are gonna be 3000 watts. And one thing I will mention, um, it is a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter, but it does have a surge load. It can go up to double that. So 6,000 watts worth of surge to get your stuff going. So when you start some motors, it's gonna surge up higher than it's rated wattage. And that's what that buffer zone is for. So it has a 6,000 watt surge load, 3,000 watts continuous. And uh, we're gonna be pushing over that 3,000 watts when we start some of these appliances right off the bat. And I'll, I'll kind of just show you during the test. So without any further ado, let's go out there and really put this thing to the test. So we're gonna hook up the inverter here. We're gonna take our positive cables, hook those up to the positive terminal directly against it. Then you're gonna have your washer, your lock washer, and your nut. And we're gonna do that on the same negative post over there and get those connected. And now we are gonna hook up our batteries. Now with the batteries, we have to put these in parallel so they can take that really heavy power draw we're gonna be putting this guy through. So we're gonna connect the positive side. One battery using a, I'm using two gauge cables, and then we're gonna hook up all three of the cables to the uh, terminal on that closest battery right there. So we'll put all three of those on there, get them nice and secure and tied down. Then we're gonna to move to the negative side. I'm gonna go ahead and attach my two gauge cable. And then again, all three of the cables on the closest battery. You might get a little spark right here, and that is normal for a lot of inverters. That happens all the time when you connect it, so don't freak out. Then we're gonna turn on the uh, power button here, and you can see the gauge is coming on, and then that's gonna go all the way up to 120, and we're good to go. Okay, so now we're gonna try uh, this wet dry vac, which is uh, 12 amps at 120 volts, so that's around 1500 watts as well, probably about 1440, I think. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this guy in. And this is gonna have a pretty high surge and uh, we're gonna make sure the unit is on and let's give it a shot. Okay, so it ran that just fine. It has plenty of surge. Uh, to make sure that that gets going. Now we're really just gonna try and push it over the top and we're gonna do the heater and the wet dry vac, which should be right around 3000 watts and we'll see how well it does. Um, different combinations might give it a higher surge. Um, I guess what we'll do, first we'll try the wet dry vac and then turn on the heater and then we'll try vice versa because once it's already pulling 1500 watts, if we kick this on, that's gonna give it a really big surge and we'll see if it can handle that kind of abuse. So everything is plugged in here. We're gonna go ahead and start with the wet dry vac and then I'm gonna turn this guy on and see how it works.
All right, so far so good. I handled that just fine. The heater's still running here, so it's cranking out tons of heat for us at uh, 1500 watts. It's on high maximum temperature setting here. And then what we're gonna do is go ahead and kick back on the wet dry vac to give it a really big surge and see if it can handle all that at once. So let's give that a shot. All right, so we handled that really well. Um, that was 300 watts and I can hear the fans going inside. There's no noticeable heat coming off the unit itself. Um, I think the cooling fans and everything are doing a just fine job. The internal components in there look relatively cool. I'm not seeing any heat spikes inside the unit itself. Um, however, these cables that came with it right here in the back, these are warm to the touch and they're reading about a hundred degrees about a hundred degrees compared to the big black cable here my heavy-duty two gauge is uh, hardly warm at all to the touch which is nice um, so I would upgrade from the wires that they send with you they're apparently doing the job but I wouldn't want to trust them under a 3,000 watt load for very long um, so if you're gonna be running air conditioners and stuff like that I would upgrade it's nice that they gave you some some cables that came with it but they're really not gonna do you much good for permanent installation unless you're running really small stuff so um, I would just stick with like some two gauge wire and you'll be a lot safer there but it handled it really well the fans are going um, but that's because I was pushing a lot of current that was its maximum load right there was 3,000 watts so it did really well And we'll leave it on for a little while just to let the fans do their job. Because when you do turn the power off, I noticed the fans kicked off. When I turned the power on, the fans kicked back on. So you might want to leave it on for a while after you're done using it with a heavy load to make sure that it has time to cool off all those internal components uh, on its own. There you go. And the fans just kicked off, so that was a completely successful test, and it handled really well. So while I was reviewing the footage for this video, I noticed that when I totally maxed the inverter out at 3,000 watts, the voltage on the display dropped down to 104 volts. And I thought to myself, is that a dangerously low voltage? So I decided to do some research on that. And it turns out that is within the safe limits. House AC is 120 volts. And if you're at an RV park or something like that, it can range all over the place, uh, higher or lower. And so I actually went and checked out all the surge protectors that, that Camco and and uh, surge guard and all of them put out to protect your RV against low voltage or too high voltage at the pedestal. Turns out that all of them have a low voltage cutoff of 102 volts and a high voltage cutoff of 132 volts. So anything within that range, they all consider safe voltage for your RV. And it was a 104 totally maxed. When it was anything below that, like a 2500 watts, it was up at 117 doing fine. But 104 is safe. However, I thought it might have had something to do with the smaller cables that they send. Like I said, I think you should use two gauge. So I went ahead and reran the test using two gauge cables. And guess what? It pumped it up to 108. And so I'll show you that real quick, just so you kind of know that that's where it's going to sit when that's with a maximum power draw of 3000 watts. And so 107, 108 is just fine. If you use the two gauge cables, that's where it's going to sit, even when it's being fully maxed out at 3000 watts. So let's check that out real quick and then we'll jump back to me to finish the video. Okay, so we have the same heater, the same wet dry vac, but I've upgraded to the two gauge cables to see if that helps because I think the other cables were just kind of insufficient. So Okay, there we go. Let's hit the wet dry vac. So it did really well. Um, I was impressed. It handled everything just fine. 
Um, I, I talked about some of the stuff that I was doing during the test and it handled it all beautifully. Again, those wires, those little wires heated up slightly. I would probably recommend getting some thicker gauge wires for permanent applications where you're using big power draw stuff. I am gonna also pull the cover off and show you the internal workings of that guy uh, here in just a second. I am not an electrical electrical engineer, but um, I can say that everything looked pretty solidly built. I, I tinker with a lot of electric stuff, but also if any of you guys out there really are um, educated in the ways of what you know, what kind of uh, MOSFETs and capacitors and wiring are on a circuit board, you might appreciate just a quick peek under the hood. I can't tell you much about it, but at least you can see what's in there and how it was made. And everything does look very sturdy and it all performed very well. So let's take a quick peek under the hood and I'll be right back. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed the peek under the hood. I'm not an electrical engineer, but I do a lot of electronic tinkering and everything looked pretty solid to me. The, the MOSFETs and uh, the capacitors and everything looked like it was pretty well engineered. Uh, the wiring looked like it was sturdy enough. And obviously with the testing, it can definitely handle that 3000 watt load. And I'm sure we surged over that quite a bit. It does have a surge rating of 6000 watts and uh, we got nowhere close to that, I'm sure but the 3000 watt continuous is what we were going for and it handled that perfectly. It didn't overheat, there was no weird smells. Um, it did everything just fine and I ran that test for a good 15 minutes while I walked away and um, it, it performed just fine. So I'll put a link in the description below so you can check it out at Amazon and see the price on this guy because it's pretty impressive what you get um, for that price. And you can check that out down below if you're interested in more information about it. And uh, that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for sending me this unit. And uh, I really enjoyed testing it out. And I hope this information was valuable to all of you. If it was, please like, share, subscribe. And until the next video, thanks so much for watching and happy camping.